which is uh, which is about basically a single machine scheduling with release time, deadline, setup time, and rejection. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthijs de Weert, and I'd like to share with you two general insights that we use to solve a rather rich single machine scheduling problem. This is joint work with Robert Baart and Lai He. For example, Earth observation satellites have a list of observation tasks of specific areas on the Earth's surface. When orbiting the Earth, they can uh, select which tasks for which tasks to do the actual observation. Another example is in manufacturing, when there is a large set of make-to-order jobs that cannot all be dealt with before their deadlines. Optimal solutions for these type of problems can be found within an hour on a, a standard uh, laptop uh, until around 50 jobs. It's our aim to solve larger instances to optimality. The main ideas are to exploit this problem structure and uh, look at this problem from the perspective of dynamic programming and position diagrams. This problem is sometimes called the order acceptance and scheduling problem. It is defined as follows. We need to schedule n jobs at a single machine where for each job we have a processing time, a deadline, and a release time. And a job needs to be scheduled within the time window of the release time and the deadline. In addition to the deadline, we also have a due date. Ideally, the job is finished before the due date. If it finishes between the due date and the deadline, we incur a small penalty defined by W in this notation. Possibly we also have, this, for each combination of jobs, a sequence-dependent setup time that describes extra time needed when switching from one job to the next. Furthermore, we have a, a value or revenue for each job if it's actually executed. So the objective is to select a subset of the jobs and schedule them such that the total, re total revenue minus the total tardiness is maximized. For example, here on the right hand side, we have three jobs with processing times 5, 3 and 2 that all need to be scheduled before time 9. Well, this is not possible, so only two of these jobs can be scheduled. For example, uh, a schedule with first job 1 and then job 2 uh, gives us a value of 21 by having the, the revenue for job 1 and 2, 25, <clears throat> but also a penalty because job 2 finishes at time 8 instead of 4, which, which is the, the due date for this job. This maximization problem is actually equivalent to the minimization problem for a single machine with release times, sequence dependent setup times, the possible rejection of jobs, and the deadline, where we minimize the tardiness of the selected jobs minus the revenue of the selected jobs. I present to you this notation because it makes it easier to make the relation to restricted versions of this problem. For example, without total tardiness, this is equivalent to the orienteering problem with time windows, which again, without rejection, would be equivalent to traveling salesman. Without the sequence-dependent setup times, this is equivalent to the job interval selection problem, also known as the throughput maximization problem. All these problems are NP-hard. Let's look more closely at the satellite scheduling problem, in particular when the satellite is agile, on the right hand side of the slide. It's visualized that when there are, for example, three potential observation tasks, it can select either of them, but not all of them, because there is because of the necessary time to get from to turn the satellite from one observation to the other. So what we see here is that at any moment in time there is only a limited number of alternative tasks that we can consider, that we need to consider. And this is exploited in the following dynamic programming approach. We identify 
a subproblem with the last scheduled job, i, and its finish time, fi, and the jobs that are already scheduled before i, but could have been scheduled after i. This allows us to express recursively the optimal solution to any subproblem of this form. To get to that value, to get to the optimal value of a subproblem, we take the maximum out of all possible jobs that can be feasibly scheduled after i, without of course the ones that have already been scheduled, take the value of that job minus the lateness plus recursively the optimal value of the subproblem uh, ending in with job k and with an updated finish time and set of jobs that have been scheduled and could have been scheduled after k. This formulation leads to a relatively small space or you could say relatively small size of the decision diagram. Let W be the number of the maximum number of jobs that are overlapping at a certain time t. And let sigma be the largest slack of any job, the number of allowed uh, starting times. The state space is then n times sigma times 2 to the power w. And since for each subproblem we consider a next job k, and that can be any job, and it takes about w squared time to compute the resulting state, the runtime of this algorithm is n squared times w squared times sigma times 2 to the power of w. And this means that we have a fixed parameter tractable algorithm with as parameters the width and the slack. Looking at this formula, you see that if we would take the width and the slack as a constant, then the runtime is actually only n squared. And we can improve this, uh, reduce the state space further by considering the following uh, rule of dominance. If we have two states ending in the same Two states to two subproblems where we have the same job at the end, but where the finish time of state one is before that of state two, leaving more uh, leaving more time for the remaining jobs, and the value of that state is higher, and the, uh, the set of jobs that we cannot select in state one is, is smaller, so the set that we can select is larger, well, or, or equal, uh, then we say that state S1 dominates state S2. It is never better to go forward from state two. We're interested in the performance of these two ideas compared to the state of the art. We do this comparison based on a a set of benchmark problem instances generated according uh, to the literature on order acceptance and schedule. On this slide you see an example of one such instance. On the x-axis we have the time and uh, you can see here a set of rectangles. Each uh, light gray rectangle represents the availability window, so the release time and the deadline of a job. The dark gray a rectangle represents the processing time of a job. So in this visualization, all jobs are positioned at the start at their release time. Uh, but this is not a schedule, this represents the instance, and it's not uh, generally not possible to schedule all these jobs. In particular, because some of these time windows are overlapping. The number of jobs that we can find on top of each other is the width of a problem instance. And the current state of the art is a branch and price method that has been recently shown to outperform a number of other exact methods on this particular benchmark. And, and then we aim to compare our exact method, EM, with and without the dominance rule to this 
range and price method. The results can be found in this table. The top rows represent problem instances with 50 jobs. What we see here uh, is per row the average results across 10 instances generated with the parameters R and sigma. Each instance has a certain width and what we see in the column W is the average width across those 10 instances. Then we have the results on the exact method with dominance and the exact method without dominance and at the, the most right hand column it's the average result for the branch and price method across these instances. All these results are the runtime and whenever uh, there is a result the method was able to find uh, the optimal solution uh, in all ten, 10 instances. What we can observe here is that uh, except for a problem with uh, 50 jobs and a rather high width, the exact method with the dominance rule was significantly faster in computing the solutions. Furthermore, we see that for many problems with 100 jobs, the exact method can find the solution as well. Whereas the state of the art was not able to, to do that within an hour. The same ideas can also be used to design a few approximation methods. For example, a fully polynomial time approximation scheme where we merge states that have a relatively small difference in revenue. And we also considered a variant of the blast neighborhood where we artificially constrained the width. These two approximation methods, based on the results so far, we compared against the state of the art in heuristics, which are uh, HSSDA, a local search method, and advanced large neighborhood search. These two plots show the results on a benchmark set with 100 jobs. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the runtime of these algorithms uh, on problem instances with varying width. On the x-axis we have an increasing width. What can be observed quite quickly is that two heuristics are the fastest across all of them, uh, which is the local search method and the Belas neighborhood with a limit of five. If we then go to the left-hand side, uh, where we see the solution quality. Well, the first observation is that on the y-axis we are talking about uh, the relative value of the solutions of 95% of the optimal for the maximization problem. What we can also observe is that the two fastest heuristics uh, are, are among, well, are the only ones who are not performing above the 99%. Still, they are performing right, quite well uh, uh, in this area of uh, well, up until a width of 70, which is already a, a, quite a lot if we have only 100 jobs. What can be further observed is that the runtime of the FP tests are quite close to the exact method, so uh, they don't provide uh, a speed up as, as we, we hope they would. To conclude, I've shown you a new model, a new state space design for a rich single machine scheduling problem with rejection that exploits tight time windows, so a low width on problem instances. And then with a new dominance rule, this beats the state-of-the-art exact solver. Also, these state space reduction rules can be used to construct heuristics. We saw that the fully polynomial time approximation scheme uh, did not show such a great performance, but that the uh, Belas neighborhood heuristic was very, very fast. That's a polynomial time algorithm. For future work, I believe it's interesting to see how these ideas can be incorporated in a constraint programming solver, how they can be generalized to multiple machines, for example, to vehicle routing, and to further study this relation between decision diagrams, planning programming, and fixed parameter tractability.
For further information, please refer to our journal paper and the implementation of the source code and benchmark instances. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions from the audience? Not at the moment, no. Not at the moment. So for me, I have uh, maybe one question. I saw that basically you were using several ingredients in your approach, like uh, yeah, some dynamic programming and dominance rule, but I didn't somehow get the decision on the decision part. So uh, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get this part. Yeah, I, I see the, the use of decision diagram for optimization problems as a generalization of dynamic programming, where uh, dominance rules, for example, are included. And especially for the full, fully polynomial time approximation scheme, we merged states with similar values, where the value was very, uh, of the two states was very close. And therefore, we don't. Uh, we, we can't find the optimal solution anymore, but we find an approximation of the optimal solution with a guarantee. Yeah, and that but is you don't refer, when you, when, when you speak about decision diagram, you don't refer to MDD stuff or do you refer to things like MDD or not? I, I'm um, referring to uh, building a decision diagram of the whole optimization problem uh, yes. In the way that uh, John Hooker and uh, William van Hoover, for example. Yes, uh, okay, okay, fine. Yes. There, uh, I understand. Is one of the, the main principles, and uh, that we yeah. say the dominance is state, like state merging, but also the FP test is. Okay. Fine with me. So, uh, yeah, if there is no other questions, then we can go to the last talk of the session. <laughs>